Hi, everyone. My name is Brian Black, and this is going to be a very brief discussion on Deep Instinct and the differentiators that we as a company are doing in the realms of artificial brains and deep learning. So to start very quickly, what is it? Why do we call them artificial brains? What is an artificial brain? Well, the reason they're called as such is because much like the human brain, they have neurons, synapses, and they have different weights that connect different questions to different answers. And the way they learn over time by connecting these various points that allow them to understand the world around them, just like a human. And it's also the same reason you could perhaps remember that corner store when you were a kid, but may not be able to remember the sandwich you had for lunch yesterday. It's simply because there's more weight, more neurons, more synapses to one memory than another. And artificial brains work the same way. As they experience the world around them, they begin to understand contextually what they're dealing with. Now, the thing that makes a deep learning artificial brain well deep are the hidden layers. Neural networks have been around for a very long time, but it's only been in the past decade or so that we've started to apply these many different hidden layers. And it's in all of those hidden layers that the real contextual understanding begins to come to light. So here's a quick example of an input of images. And as it begins to go through the various hidden layers, the images begin refining themselves until finally it comes to an answer and can provide that in the output layer. So what does that look like in the real world? Well, this is what an artificial brain looks like when it's performing as a self-driving car. Deep learning powers artificial brains and artificial brains power self-driving cars unanimously. So perhaps maybe if you've gone on a long road trip, you may get to, get to the end and wonder why you're so tired, even though you might have been in a, a cushy seat and had some snacks with you or, or whatnot. It was a beautiful day. Well, really, this is why. This is what the human brain is doing every second, every millisecond that you're on the road and you're driving. You are also calculating for stop signs, for other traffic, other cars, parked cars. You're calculating speeds, and you're doing that all very intuitively, but it is tiring. But this is what an artificial brain is doing when it's driving as a self-driving car. Now, what does that mean to cybersecurity? Deep Instinct is a prevention-first cybersecurity tool. So what does that ultimately mean? Well, let's take a look at an example like Emotet. Emotet has started to roar back again. And what we like to say in deep learning is we get multiple swings at the same pitch. So here's an example. You've got the email attachment that comes down as an office uh, file. That is one of the most common methods of delivery. And of course, we have a deep learning model that can monitor office files. And we're going to take action on that pre-execution. So it's not going to land on your disk. You're not going to have to have a human double click on it before we figure out why it's bad. But let's play the what if game. Let's say the artificial brain happened to miss this particular thread. Well, when the threat is has the VBA uh, embedded launcher, we're going to have a, or we do have a deep learning model to detect that as well. But what if, let's keep playing that game. It launches the, the PowerShell. We have a suspicious PowerShell module. Let's say they beat that. We have a deep learning model for PowerShell, first in the world of its kind, to help eliminate false positives while identifying malicious PowerShell. If they manage to beat that, now we're looking at the payload dropper. Once again, the artificial brain and Deep Instinct's own unique reputation service is going to be in play, and we're going to be able to take a look at that model as well. But of course, if an arbitrary shell code attempts to launch or a code injection, our engine's going to stop that in action uh, before anything can be completed. But of course, once again, now we've got the uh, dropper that comes down, the second stage, the Ryu dropper. That's also not a problem. The artificial brain is going to be able to detect that pre-execution if it's a threat or not. But then what happens if we have a piece of malware that's just so advanced it manages to beat all of that? Well, we also are looking for uh, ransomware behavior, and we can stop the encryption phase before it occurs. These are just some of the many engines that we have within our product and capabilities. This artificial brain doesn't exist in the cloud. It operates on the endpoint, and it's doing it with around 1% CPU utilization. It's an incredibly lightweight agent because it's using a fundamentally different technology. And that's really important, we think because it's all powered by the framework. Now, here's a couple frameworks that you are familiar with. Uh, you probably interact with some or perhaps all of these companies in a way. Building an artificial brain means having a framework that can, can build that deep neural network that understands how to construct the artificial brain. And uh, there wasn't any in cybersecurity before Deep Instinct came along. We were the world's first to build a framework specifically for cybersecurity. We are the only ones that have such a framework. And that's really important because this isn't a case of taking something off the shelf and seeing if they can make it work, right? You can't do with images what you can do with binaries and vice versa. So having something like Google's TensorFlow doesn't quite work because it simply wasn't designed for the use case. So having the right framework, applying it to the right use case is very important. So what does all that mean? We're dealing with a fundamentally different technology than you may be familiar with when it comes to cybersecurity. We're not using signatures. There is no machine learning feature extraction of any type. 
Um, we don't need to sandbox something though, heuristics. And again, because the artificial brain resides on each and every asset, there's no online requirement. We operate just as successfully offline as on, and we don't need to execute the file to know if something is bad or not. And remember, we're doing this on unknown malware, true zero days. This is what the artificial brain has the power to do. So where did all this idea come from? Well, uh, it came from our three co-founders, uh, our CEO, Guy Caspi, our CTO, Guy uh, Nadav Manan, and of course, our chief data scientist, Dr. Eli David, one of the world's premier deep learning specialists um, that we're fortunate to have here at our company. So back in 2016, the company formed, but it was prior to that, where they looked at this incredible technology, saw how it was being applied to uh, self-driving cars and uh, computer analytics, as well as logistical systems and even image recognition. And they said, can this be the new thing that can actually, for the first time, perhaps solve cybersecurity? So that's what the artificial brain attempts to do, solve cybersecurity. Thank you very much. If you're interested, of course, we'd love to talk to you further on this topic.